guys, hi Flinch Squad! Welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon Battle Series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping onto the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spot Ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which is the equivalent rule set of the VGC 2018 season. So it is Monday, guys. We are kicking off the week with a brand new team, as always. Do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and smash that like button if you enjoy the videos because it does massively help out the channel in general. So, like we said last week, we'll be starting with a new team this week. As you can see, it is on your screen in front of you. And one of the things that is so heartbreaking to me is because I get so many great suggestions and comments from all of you guys, it's nearly impossible to fit them all into one team, which is really unfortunate. And it's something that I want to be able to do, but just it it's we've got six Pokemon. We get so many suggestions, I can't physically do it. But on the same note as that, guys, I do keep a list of every single comment suggestion that is made. Like one comment we had last week, one suggestion was um, Torkoal and Shiftry. So that's something I really, really am looking forward to getting um, going and using. And we've got like two months of the VGC 2018 season left. So we will be able to fit all of these suggestions in. And hopefully the Torkoal Shiftry suggestion is going to be one of the next ones. We've had Salamis, we've had loads of suggestions. But one of the main consensus that was last week was the Kangaskhan, the kind of chalk team that's coined um, Mega Kang we haven't played on the channel this season so it's kind of nice to build something around that and Togekiss was something else that was was mentioned um, and Rotom as well so we've got all three of those in this team I've kind of paired those up well, nicely with the um, Alolan Marowak, the Landorysterian I'll just hide now. Um, I know Lander is theory, in, but it, it it does fit the team very well. It offers intimidate support, another ground immunity, a ground type that's super helpful. And then we round off the uh, Firewater Grass Core, which I always try and like to put in just for defensive synergy, switching synergy uh, with that Cortana that's uh, So we've got two Tailwind setters on this team. It's going to be primarily a Tailwind setting team. Uh, we've got ways to stop our opponents setting up trick rooms with fake out we've got enough pressure around the team as well to switch with defensive synergy and we've got mods in there which can flinch flinch and stuff like that so it should be quite good we'll go through all the details of the team as we go through this week and through our matches but before i forget guys we have a giveaway going on at the minute for some flinch merch which if you don't know about you can grab yourselves one of these lovely I Heart Flinch Tees, which is a new tee design that we've had recently come out, and another new design which was asked by you guys as a Flinch Life hoodie. So we will be given one of these and one of these shirts away, um, and the giveaway will be on the Friday this week. We'll do a live Wheel of Fortune for two lucky winners. One will win the hoodie and one will win a t-shirt. All you guys need to do to enter the giveaway is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment but in that comment make sure you have somewhere in that comment hashtag flinch squad hashtag flinch squad so you need to have that hashtag flinch squad you'll be entered into the draw and on friday we'll do the wheel of fortune like i say and i will be giving and sending out two of these well one of the hoodies one of the t-shirts to two lucky winners so make sure you tune in make sure you get your entries in guys and that will be great in other news i know i've been pushing the patreon site that i have uploaded recently but instead of spamming the videos constantly at the start and at the end mentioning it that i have done a separate video just explain the patreon what it's all about there's no obligations to it it's just a bit of an explanation to how it works so i don't have to keep dropping it in every single video because i do understand it can be a bit frustrating if you just come to watch the battles and things like that so um i will just plug flinch if you want to grab one of these tees or one of the other tees that we've got to rock some flinch merchandise become an official member of the flinch squad then you can go over to this little link here and it'll take you over to a teespring site and you can grab one of those lovely tees but you might want to hold off just for a little while because we are doing that giveaway at the end of the week so good luck to each and every one of you that do enter and i can't wait to give those away right Let's get into the matches. We've had a crazy weekend of events over this past weekend. We had the World Cup going on, England playing, and uh, thankfully getting through to the semi-final of the World Cup. Crazy. So we'll be playing Croatia on the Wednesday evening, which will be amazing. I can't wait for that. We've got our first opponent of the day. We've got Francis from the United States. 16 or 2 rating, playing a team of 5 Pokemon, not 6. Doesn't need that 6th slot. Um, and consisting of Tapu Fini, Raichu, Ferrothorn, Charizard, which is going to be white, and Scrafty. So, 
I wonder if Francis is just testing out and finding really what that last slot could be more useful for him, or um, maybe Landris Theorem would be good in that slot. Um, so we've got Firewater Grass Core, very hard to break down. Going to be with that Finny the Ferrothorn, and like I say, the Charizard Y potentially could be Charizard X. The Raichu there with the Lightning Rod ability, going to be a bit of a pain for us. Um, just considering that we want to be able to get uh, Rotom working if we do bring it here because it can potentially be quite good. Um, Marowak is going to be handy for us against that, that Raichu obviously taking advantage of the sun if it is brought from the Charizard. Y hits the Ferrothorn for very good damage. Got to be a bit cautious of that Scrafty and then the, the uh, Tapu Fini as well. But if the sun does come out, those water type attacks aren't going to be doing as much damage. So let's see what we can do here. Um, ba -ba -boom. fake out's going to be a thing, isn't it? So we don't probably don't want to lead off with. No, no, we will lead off with Kang because we are in a focus Kang, so that's a nice option to have there. Um, maybe we want to bring. Seems crazy. We can bring Landorus. I think Marowak, and I think Rotom. Let's go for that and see how we get on. So the Rotom in this team is a little bit interested. It's, it's, it is defensive enough, so it can take attacks, but the thing is as well, we've got the Waltarium on it as well, so we can like nuke things that threaten um, Marowak and, and, and just get rid of those fire types like Landorus Theory and then just remove them from the field pretty quickly. So it was something I wanted to test, so we'll have a go with that at the early stage of this week. As always though, we can make changes as we go along because there's no rules about keeping anything set in stone is there for ourselves. You do see the Scrafty and the Charizard come out for my opponent. And we are going to trade some Intimidate from both sides. So, um, I feel like we could just trade Fake Outs here, couldn't we? Um, we Mega Evolve, Fake Out the Charizard and I might actually just switch out Landorus into Rotom. My opponent could play around this, protect the Charizard and go for maybe a Drain Punch with the Scrafty. Or switch it out even. Is that the going to come in? But we're likely to see, I would think, Raichu is going to be the other Pokemon with this call. We might just trade Fake Outs here, but like I say, we might see a Drain Punch come out. We're going to be able to get the fake out onto the type of thing. You just get some chip onto it, which is always nice. And what are we going to see this Scrafty do? And it's just gone for a fake out into that Landorus. Right, now you've got to think that the if the Raichu is in the back, this is the time that it comes in. I'm going to go for a return, just get some damage onto the type of thing. And I'm going to launch off a Hydro Vortex into that Scrafty slot. It might be a Salt Vest Scrafty, so we'll probably be able to take it, but at the same time, we're going to be getting some big damage onto it, and we're going to be avoiding any potential Hydro Pump misses, which Rotom is notorious for. But we are going to see the Raichu come in as we expected, so there's no Ferrothorn to deal with in this match. We'll get the return into the Finny, do some nice damage there, uh, just taking it down under 50%, and we do see that our Rotom is faster than the Finny, which is always good. And we'll be able to get this Hydro Vortex off. If this Raichu is not Sash, then we will be able to pick up a clean KO onto it. Should be good. So here we go. Big, big Z move to kick us off this week. And it is Sashed. There we go. Oh, and a Carmine coming out. All right. Hmm, no. We need to keep Kangaskhan around, really, for this Finny to deal with it. Um, we are minus one at the moment, I believe. Yes, so we need to... Uh, it's going to be Berry as well. Now, I've not really got any great switches in for the Finny right at this moment. Um, I might be better off just staying in with Kang and just going for... And like doubling into the Raichu here, because once the Raichu's gone, Rotom has a lot easier job. 
So I'm gonna hydro pump and I'm gonna just return. Right, you can only fake one thing out, and it is gonna be the Kangaskhan. It's gonna get a critical hit. And we do connect with that hydro pump, which is unheard of. We are gonna be able to take the Raichu down. The problem is though, now the Scrafty comes in. Ooh. Okay, Finny, getting greedy. But getting very threatening as well. And makes a lot of sense because the Scrafty comes in now, has access to that fake out again. Um so. Hmm. Tapu Finny's gonna be hitting like a truck now. And Kangaskhan is on minus two. We might be better off sacking um, Landorus here, to be honest, out of everything. So I am just going to bring in Landorus, and I'm just going to play it a little bit cautiously and just protect Rotom here. I don't want to really just take a Moonblast into that slot. If the Scrafty decides to go for a fake out into the Kang, um, but we might see a double into that slot, or even just a Muddy Water come out just to get some chip onto the Rotom and stop that Kang going. But I'd imagine we'll probably lose Landorus here, and it's just a, a decision that we're going to have to make. Like, Landorus is going to be very good against the Charizard, but at the same time, um, Marowak for our end game, if we can keep that for Charizard, it'll be just as good. So, there's a fake out into the Rotom, and we're going to see a Moonblast into the Rotom. Okay, so we get a free switch into Landorus. We reset the um, Intimidate drops as well onto. the Landorus, which is kind of nice. Um, now we can go for an Earthquake. T-Bolt. I think that's not a bad play, to be honest. The Finny might protect. No protect coming out, but because of that Levitate ability on the Rotom, we're not affected by the Earthquake, which makes it nice for us to Earthquake next to. Proc a Berry on the Finny for sure. And I don't suppose the T-Bolt's going to be doing too much damage. But the Finny has to make a decision. Does it go Moonblast and leave the Landorus open to just throw out some attacks? Or does it go for Muddy Water and the Rotom will take that? Hopefully we don't get any accuracy drops from it. We lose Landorus for sure. But it does give us a free switch into Kang now. Um, and we are going to be able to take down that, that Finny with our Kangaskhan. We're going to see a knockoff. But because we have a Z crystal, does not do anything. And the Misty Terrain amazingly disappears. So we can actually will a wisp the Scrafty now and just go for a return into the Finny. It's Berry's gone, so we will be able to take it down. We might even see the Charizard come in for that Scrafty. Uh, I am going to re return the Finny. And I am going to go for a. Hmm. Like there's part of me that wants to double into the Scrafty slot with a return T-Bolt. Um, but the, there's another part of me that thinks the Finny's too threatening just to leave untouched. I'm going to T-Bolt. I'm not going to double in. Yeah, there's a switch out. We're going to see probably the Finny protect here. But at least we get... Yeah. At least we've got the T-Bolt into the Charizard, which is nice. And we're not going to take it down as well. So taking that slot down would mean that the Scrafty... Oh, my God. Huh. Oh, that is super frustrating. That accuracy drop really affecting us there, which is not ideal. So I'm going to return into the Finny again. Um, huh. Ugh. A T-Bolt would have done like 50%. Do we switch out the Rotom at this stage or not? I feel like... Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for another T-Bolt into the Charizard. Hopefully we don't see Overheat. Oh no, the Charizard is going to switch straight back out. Try and cycle that return. That Intimidate. So that's fine. Just never expect to miss a T-Bolt. Hopefully the return, even minus one. From the damage we did previously, it should be enough. It is enough. So we take down the Finny, which is ideal. And we'll be able to get this T-Bolt off into the rock. Uh, the Scrafty. Just do a bit of chip damage, which is always good. Helps us along our way. Hmm. Right. 
let's go into Marowak and let's I'm gonna actually sack Rotom here because I expect probably to lose Rotom um, but I want to get Kangaskhan out to get it back in to, to utilize that fake out once more we'll bring in the Marowak here we'll be able to take these fire type attacks a lot better because of its fire typing than Kangaskhan we are going to see the Charizard Y revealed here from my opponent. So we have to go and fake out into the Marowak slot heatwave. Rotom might take this. Yeah, it does. We'll get a T-Bolt. Hopefully this one doesn't miss. Oh, but we can't, of course. Ha! <laughs> Being fools. Idiotic. Can't believe that. Can't believe what we've just done. Um, we'll be able to get the Scrafty for sure, um, and we'll just, huh, I can't believe I actually just did that. Let's try and get some damage under the Charizard, we want the Rotom to go down. There's another Heat Wave, we're going to lose Rotom, the Flare Blitz will be able to get the Scrafty, and we will outspeed the Scrafty with our Marowak. We might go down to Recoil though, Ooh, it's going to be, nah, we'll be fine. But we'll be we're in heat wave we're heat wave range for sure. Um I can't believe I just did that. That's such a twenty seventeen thing to do, isn't it? Uh this match would be a lot easier if we'd hit that Thunderbolt earlier, unfortunately. We can't really do much about it. Now we'll go for a fake out. The Charizard probably just protect here though. It'd be interesting to see if the Charizard or the the Kangaskhan is faster, which is faster. There's a Shadow Bomb. Does the Charizard have overheat? That's the other thing. We'll Shadow Bomb and we will just go for a return. We can't really do much else here. But I hope we're we are faster. So if Kang takes whatever the Charizard throws out at us, then we win this. There's a heat wave, so we'll take a heat wave for sure. Marowak won't, unfortunately. Oof. Big that Oh, and the burn. The RNG is hating us right now. Okay. I still think we should be alright. The return, even from this range, should take it down. Unless it was like a crazy speed tie. Charles are going for a protect. Going to try and get that burn damage. Get us on that. And the sun does fade. Okay, we've got like two more turns of burn, so we should be fine. Trying for the double protect, but not going to work, unfortunately. And probably trying to avoid a sucker punch as well, but we can't really afford to go for that. It might not be enough to take down the Charizard after the burn. And, whew, very good game to Francis. We come through that. Ah. <sighs> On the better side of it, but it wasn't easy at all. Um, I could say the T-Bolt miss earlier on was pretty huge for us. Um, but you kind of don't expect T-Bolt to miss out of all things. But you can never expect after an accuracy drop. But the team did not too bad there. So hopefully we can continue this, this streak on. Because we didn't have the best of ends to the week on Friday last week with the Mega Camera team. Which was a little bit disappointing. Um, it's always nice to end... Um, a week with a couple of wins, but um, it does like I said on Friday, it doesn't always happen, and it's just making sure that you take the most out of those um, losses for you, that you can going forward. So we've got an next opponent, 1728 rated Japanese player playing a team of Salamence, Tyranitar, Excadrill, Tapu Fini, Tapu Gulu, and a Rotom Heat. So um, you've got the sand core there, very threatening. You've got the extra drill with the sand rush ability, doubling its speed in the sandstorm that the T-Tar bringing. Going to have Mega Salamence there, intimidate support, fire, flying type stab attacks. Probably um, it could potentially have Dragon Dance, something we have to consider. And then you've got double Tapus, Tapu Bulu, uh, and the type of Finny again. We've got stuff to deal with there. Like Rotom Wash is good for the Finny, the T-Tar, the, the Mence the Rotom, Heat, uh, even the Excadrill. Uh, it's just going to be that type of bully that we'll need to, to be a bit more mindful of. Um, so Rotom Wash, yeah, very good. 
in general. Um, and I think I will lead Landorus Rotom just to get the Intimidate off and make use of that. Um, we probably want Togekiss and do we want to bring our Mega here as well? I think we do want Kangaskhan and we'll lock in with those four and we'll see how we get on guys. Ooh, yes. Um, and obviously as well over the weekend we had the US International Championships um, which is the, the last big major of the of the season so it's very exciting um, I'm pre-recording this episode like I normally do guys so the tournament hasn't finished yet um, so good luck to all of those players playing congratulations to the winners and just the stream up to now has been amazing so great job by the screen stream crew and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did let me know and let me know which teams kind of stuck out to you and players and matches and things like that I'd love to hear how you enjoyed the stream of the weekend we are going to see my opponent lead off with Rotom Heat and the Salamence so we're in not a bad position here um, and we do trade um, Intimidates I think rather than just well I could just check out Rock Slide there's nothing wrong with doing that um, I kind of want to preserve the Intimidate for when the Tito and the extra drill come in so I am gonna go do I switch or do I just U-turn like I could yeah I'm gonna go into Togekiss here with Landorus and I'm gonna launch a hmm I feel like I could go for a Z move into the Rotom Heat which I'm gonna do because the Salamence isn't really putting on any pressure at all to our Rotom. We've got access to Will-O-Wisp as well, so if it stays in, we can burn it. We've always got that option. Salamence going to Mega Revolve. But also Dragon Dance here. But it'd be nice being able to just remove the, the Rotom Heat from the field if we can. There's a Hyper Voice coming out. No Protect from that Rotom. I if we're going to see a Z-Move from it. We are. It's going to outspeed us. It's going to be a Gigavolt Havoc. I don't know if we take this. Really don't. And if we lose Rotom now, like we were saying in Team Preview how important it is and how good it is against everything. It makes this match so much more difficult. And Rotom Heats tend to be a lot more, a lot, like a lot faster than Rotom Washes. So, oh, we take it. Yes. Awesome. And here we go with the raw, the wash Rotom, the washing machine. Going to throw out a huge Z move to get rid in return, and there's no doubt that this will pick up the kale. Which is great, guys. I'm going to be. I need to be right back. I feel like there's someone in my house, but there might not be as well. I feel like I can hear someone walking around. I'm in alone. I hope there's not. It might just be me. I'll continue the match. If something happens, guys, it's on video. I'm a little bit worried, though. But I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, so we take down the Rotom Heat. I've just taken the heat out of that big moment that I'll buy, actually. Getting creeped out by someone maybe being in the house, but it's fine. So we're going to see the extra drill come in now. Now Rotten Wash is in a bit of a position where it is threatened quite heavily from the Hyper Voice taking us down. Um, but I could go for a Tailwind and I think I potentially want to get the Landorus back in um, and just preserve Rotom. If you can get it back in with the Tailwind up, that's that's really good for us. So we'll try and see if we can maneuver that board position at a later stage in the game. Landorus isn't going to enjoy coming in on our Hyper Voice, but we'll come in and the, the Intimidate will be really beneficial for the toggle kiss and that extra or whatever it might throw out like an iron head or something onto us so we'll see if we can get through this turn hyper voice coming out doesn't proc the berry and an iron head is going to take down toggle kiss a bit unfortunate so we don't have that access to that tailwind anymore right <clears throat> i think it's time for kang isn't it Okay, let's Mega Evolve, fake out the Salamence, and let us... Do we lock into Earth Power here? Or do we Rock Slide? Because we could potentially just... 
Yeah, rock slide's not a bad option to be honest. Yeah, we definitely want to fake out the Salamence. It probably protects here, or switches out. Um, uh, the only thing is if the Tito's in the back, which I kind of expect it to be. I want to lock into Earth Power. I kind of want to rock slide, but mm, okay, extra drill and switch out. Tito coming in, that's not bad. It's definitely not the worst. Okay, so we'll get a free Earth Power onto it, which is excellent. We'll be able to get some chip onto the Salamence as well with this fake out. Mm, yeah, Salamence just protecting. So the Rock Slide here wasn't wasn't the most optimal of moves, but the Earth Power is going to be good because we are going to be able to get rid of this Ooh, we're not going to be able to get rid of the T-Tile the next... Oh, we probably are, because we get the special defense drop, so that's pretty huge for us. Um, can Landorus take another Hyper Voice? Yeah, totally can. Um, Salamence, does it stay in? And what do we have? We've just got the raw term, haven't we, in the back? Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to return into the Salamence, and I kind of want to double into the Salamence here, because I expect the extra drill to maybe come in on that slot. Um, but we'll go for the Earth Power into the Tito, because if the, the Tito doesn't protect and it stays in, we do remove it from the field. We're not going to take the Salamence away this turn, but um, we do want to leave ourselves a little bit of room where we've got an end game where we can take Landorus out. Tyranitar is just going to protect. It makes sense. And I wonder if two returns are going to be enough to get the Salamence. There's a Hyper Voice. We'll take this. Yeah. Just about. Ooh. We will. Another return will get it. But. Hmm. Okay, let's go for the return into the Mence. Let's go into Rotom with Landorus, because we, we don't want to lose Landorus right now. And we want to get at least another Intimidate onto the Tito, the Excadrill as well with Lando. So we'll see what we can do. I don't think Sucker Punch is enough from this range to the Salamence as well. So that's the reason why I haven't went for it. Um... The Kang should take this. Yeah, just about. But whatever the Tito throws out now, we're going to lose Kang, and then it's going to be Lando. On such low health against the next Gadrill in the sand. Hmm. Ooh, Dragon Dance. Alright. That's not the worst. Okay. So we'll get Landorus in. But the thing is that the, the extra drill just comes in and just rock slides. And everything goes down. Because we're such low health right now. Very close. Very close. But we needed to preserve the raw arm a lot better than we did. Um, and that first turn, letting it go down. And it, it kind of shows as well how good that hyper voice is on the... Um, So the extra drill might be sashed as well, um, so we'll sucker punch it and we'll go for an earthquake just to break the potential sash. And if for whatever reason a rock slide misses or an iron head misses or whatever, um, there's not bad damage. If we can get an earthquake off, I mean, yeah, we're going to see an iron head. Yeah, it makes sense into that slot, 100%. Um, and T child gonna, yeah, assurance. Just showing how strong that is, and I like we saw Len at the weekend running this team and doing so well with it, you know, in the the US Internet's a similar team, and that hyper voice so strong. Like a lot of players will tend to go towards a more physical set, but you kind of can't underestimate that hyper voice spread damage. It's it is ridiculously strong, and just constantly being able to throw it out each turn, doing chip, 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 chip away. It puts everything in range and makes it really hard to kind of 
build a comeback in that situation but um, it was an enjoyable game a lot of points to kind of take away from and maybe something to look at with Rota maybe we look at how we've EV'd it maybe have a bit of a faster one it can obviously take the big attacks but outspeeding your opponent there would have put us in such a better position if we'd outsped the rotten heat in that situation and taken it down before we took any damage then we're sitting in such a nice position going forward because then we can will-o-wisp the Salamence then we can will-o-wisp Tito, Excadrill, and we're not too threatened from what they're throwing out at us. So, I mean, we identified it in team preview, and it was one of the things that we needed to make sure that we were doing. Unfortunately, the big Z move came out from the rotten heat early on and put us in a position where Hyper Voice was enough to just to take us down. So, it's one of those things, but it's a match that we need to look at, and hopefully we can maybe bump into someone else playing it later in the week and uh, we can have another go at it but um guys the big thing is i want to hear your comment your opinions your thoughts on the team on the build that we've got currently at the moment it'd be great to have any suggestions from you guys because like i say we can change things up as we go through the week and all all that sort of thing but uh, mainly thank you so much for coming and uh, i hope really hope that you've enjoyed today's episode and the video so I'm going to leave it there, guys. Have an amazing evening. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday for another episode. School Hard Knocks with this team. We'll also be over on the stream tomorrow evening. Last Thursday on the stream, we did a special community team builder episode, which is on the channel if you'd like to, to go and watch that um, and catch up with the team that we made from there. And um, we are going to be playing it over on the stream tomorrow night, and it will be kicking off at 8 p.m. UK time. Tuesday evening on our Twitch channel. I'll be linked in the description in the channel. Banner has a Twitch icon. You can click that. Take you straight up to the Twitch site and channel. And uh, you can come and hang out with us. And it'll be a lot of fun. So if you are around, do do that. I will be tweeting it out on Facebook and Twitch and everything like that. And um, just a reminder, if you're not following me on Twitter or, or on Instagram or on Facebook or anything like that, make sure you do. Because I will make sure to update all of those when things are going on and stuff like that, guys. So that'll be that. Right, have an amazing evening. I hopefully see some of you for the, the stream tomorrow evening. If not, I will see you for another episode of School of Hard Knocks on Wednesday. So, let me know your thoughts, guys. Take care of yourselves, and until then, bye-bye!